You are in luck, Poirot. Of course, no journey on this train is ever ordinary, but this is a special occasion. To celebrate the 140 years of the Orient Express, the engine will be none other than the splendid Pacific 231G558. There she is, Poirot. The most celebrated train in history. Oh, my eyes fill with tears of pride. It is time we were aboard, my friend. Follow me. The wagon lit conductor, Pierre Michel, will direct you to your compartment. Lead the way, book. It was built in France in 1922 by the Compagnie Batignolles Châtillon. At the time of its purchase by the SNCF in 1938, it could reach speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Wait until you see. It is like traveling back in time. Today, the train is limited to 100 kilometers per hour. I assure you, that will be more than fast enough to get you to Paris in time for your connection to London. In the meantime, you will bask in the magic that is the Orient Express. Good evening, monsieur. Your compartment is number 202. However, I am afraid that all the others are already full. Full? But how can that be? It is incredible, monsieur. All the world elects to travel tonight. All the same, you must find room for this gentleman here. I can exercise my powers of observation while they try to find me a bed. He is a friend of mine. He can have number 201. It is taken, monsieur. What? Number 201? Yes, monsieur. We are full. Full everywhere. The 140th anniversary, perhaps. Michel, listen to me very carefully. You will leave us now. I will? Most assuredly. And when you return, a bed for my friend will have appeared. But, Monsieur Bou, you will find a bed. But there are none. You do not but book. Darling, we have to get aboard. I know, I know. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying, but... Fear of trains? Now you're making fun of me. Never, my love. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. Notice the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself. Is everything aboard the train, Hector? In your compartment, Mr. Ratchet. I'm having them disinfect the room again, as you instructed. I also got a call from the Indians. The sail is going through as you expected. There was never any doubt. No other phone calls, Hector, from Geneva or Venice? No, sir. Who were you expecting? Never you mind. Check our tickets. We're not going in until everything is confirmed. The young man seems quite agreeable, but the other... The older man is something quite different. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Why did you order so much lobster, Hotaru? My dear Freya, I need it for my specialty on the second night. And if the lobster a la mori isn't fresh, the passengers will know. We don't have enough space for my desserts. Tonight, molten chocolate cake. Tomorrow, my specialty. That is not my concern. They will not have room for them anyway. Serve your lobster tonight. Chicken a la mori must be the first night dish for the travelers. It is easier to digest. Ugh, you really are the egomaniac everyone says you are. I have every reason to be. I am the engine. You are just the caboose. Poirot, well, I am mortified. The 140th anniversary, perhaps, but such a plague of passengers.
well done. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Poirot, we have a solution. A gentleman has not yet come. An Englishman, a Monsieur Harris. A name of good omen. It is already time to leave. What do I care for, Mr. Harris? As Monsieur pleases, I had your things sent straight to your compartment. Unfortunately, you will be with another traveler. No. Only for the first night. It cannot be helped. I will survive, mon ami. Monsieur Book, we can't find enough space in the kitchen refrigerator to store all of my ingredients. How is it possible? His recipes are extravagant. We need to leave something on the platform. If my lobsters don't go, I don't go. And have the passengers of the Orient Express go hungry? Never! Must I intervene? The problem is unworthy of Poirot. But I do not intend to starve on the most luxurious train in the world. A moment to savor, to see the famous locomotive after so many years. Luggage is not stacked well. I am resisting the temptation of lining it up properly. Privyat. Privyat. Princess Dragomirov's pet minor bird. An unusual traveling companion. Ah, the restaurant car. The most important car on any self-respecting train. You can never have too many of these. Thank you for coming to help us. It is impossible to fit everything into the Gary's refrigerator. Obviously, my entree are more important than dessert. If Mr. Mori delays his lobsters for a day or two, we can restock at another station. Delay? You ask me to delay? Prea? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm sure we can find a solution. Is that a diagram of the refrigerator? May I see it? Yes. He refuses to look at it. That's the right answer. Mr. Poirot, I will reserve the finest lobster just for you. I look forward to it, monsieur. And to the dessert, mademoiselle. Hopefully. That will be the last mystery you face on our journey, my dear Poirot. Your compartment for tonight, homie, is at the back of the second-class carriage, number 102. Tomorrow, you move to a private compartment. Welcome, Monsieur Poirot. 
I apologize for the delay. Thank you, Monsieur Michel. I am delighted you could accommodate me. These first-class rooms are very spacious and luxurious. Pardon me? Oh, my apologies. This lady has a style of her own, eccentric but chic. Another golden moustache to treasure. Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. You are Mr. Harris? No, my name is McQueen. I... There is no other berth on the train, monsieur. All is arranged. Yours is the upper berth. We start in one minute. The train's remarkably full. En voiture! Listen, sir, if you'd rather have the lower berth, easier and all that, well, that's all right by me. No, 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 you are too amiable. It is for one night only at Belgrade. Oh, I see. You're getting out of Belgrade. Not exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. You may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Excuse me, Monsieur. Pierre asked me to inform you that a passenger left us, so his room is yours. Monsieur Bouc instructed that your things be transferred to room 202 during dinner. You will be more comfortable in first class. It is true what you say. Thank you, uh... Mr. Fouché, Monsieur. What is your position on the Orient Express? I manage the bar car, and I also do the restaurant car service. Well, then do not let me keep you. Lobster tonight, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Where will my new compartment be? Room 202 is at the far end of the previous car. I see. Thank you. I'll leave you to it, then. See you soon, monsieur.
Please, my friend, join me. I have taken the liberty of ordering you your lobster. Thank you. It appears our fellow passengers are all gathered here again tonight. Ah. If I had but the pen of a Balzac, I would depict the scene. Oh, it is an idea, that. Ah, you agree. It has not been done, I think. And yet, it lends itself to romance, my friend. All around us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. For three days, these people, these strangers to one another, are brought together. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from each other. At the end of the journey, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. Certainly it interests us, inviting us to watch and wonder about their lives. Ah, I know you, my friend. Even now, your mind, it is at work. Let us test it. For example, what do you make of those two? I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. And you, uh, Miss Debenham, was it? Where do you hail from? I was born in the UK. Oh, that's in England, isn't it? What do you do for a living? I teach English to children in other countries. I see. Oh, I wish I spoke a foreign language. My daughter speaks several languages. Let me tell you about her work. It's very important. Voila. There is much you can learn about someone just by observing them and listening. For example, that lady is reserved. She reveals little. She is self-contained. Some secret prompts her to allow her dinner companion to carry the conversation. I confess, in this case, what I witnessed in Istanbul suggests more. But I will respect her privacy. You will always amaze me. Mamma mia, you can feel the power of engine. We climb into the mountains with ease. I know something about the power, and this baby has it in spades. There's something special about a train. I'll give you that. I sell toys. And model trains are one of our biggest items. And not just for children, either. You sell model cars, too? Sure, but give me a train any day. Oh, my friend. What do you have against the cars? Now I work at Fortuna in Italy as a spokesperson. We are producing the next generation of electric cars, the Fortuna Firenze. Like the city, it is beautiful. We got the competitors looking over their shoulders so much they're going to hit something. Didn't mean to be insulting. It's just that there's something magical about a train. My little gray cells did not let me down. The loud gentleman is very confident, a master of his own fate. It is as much in the inflection as it is in the words. He believes in winning, also that he is the one who will win. You are a magician. Oh, it is not a parlor trick, my friend. It is simply observation. My friend, this is one of the best desserts I have ever eaten. You have always had the sweet tooth. But this... 
This... it is a masterpiece. I can't understand how the dessert can be so good. I would love to know what the recipe is. I couldn't tell what flavor the ice cream is. It looks like lemon. Look at the zest. Y yes. I wasn't sure what that was. W what is the red fruit? It looks like a raspberry. Mm. You have a good eye, Poirot. The biscuit is the foundation of the dessert. All else is built upon it. What do you think? It looks like crushed biscuits, my friend. Finally observed, indeed. Poirot, I am embarrassed to ask you a great favor. My friend, I am on this train due to the great favor you have done me. How may I assist you? This dessert is sublime. If only I had the recipe. Unfortunately, the pastry chef, Miss Nielsen, she will guard her secrets. But you, my friend, I am sure you could make her confess. You wish me to persuade the pastry chef to give up her recipe? You who are the expert at interrogation. Book, it is a dessert. It is the pinnacle of desserts. You, my friend, who, as you say, are on this train. I blush to remind you. Fine, you win. Again, what wouldn't I do for you, my friend? Oh, thank you, Poirot. Good luck. Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, sir. How can I help you? That was a magnificent dessert you served us tonight. I wanted to tell you personally how much both Monsieur Book and I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, it is so good. Monsieur Book insists on knowing how you made it. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You must know a chef never gives away their recipes. But, well, you helped with the refrigerator, and without space in it for me, there would have been no dessert. Very well. To prepare tonight's dessert, first I melt sugar to make caramel. Then I spread this caramel to make tuile. Between two tuiles, I add a small scoop of lemon ice cream, and I put the whole thing on a strawberry crown. Poirot, you are suspicious even now. The pastry chef gave up her prized recipe a little too easily. I sense she wasn't entirely honest with me. Thank you for sharing your recipe with me, but I doubt those are strawberries you're using. Oops. You have a good eye, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. What fruit do you think I used? You used raspberries, not strawberries. I'm not fooled. You're right. Mr. Book, he couldn't tell the difference. Let's move on to the bottom part of the dessert. My favorite part of the dessert. First, I melted some butter. I crumbled pieces of chocolate into the butter. Then I placed the mix in a circular mold. Finally, I let the whole thing cool down to let it harden. It's certainly not chocolate that you've crumbled. I see you do have an excellent palate. Do you know what ingredients I used? A clever pastry chef might mix crushed biscuits with butter to create this delicious base. That's it. You're getting closer to the entire recipe. Closer? <laughs> I've caught murderers with less difficulty than this. I'll give you one last challenge. I'm sure you will be able to figure out the order I mix my ingredients in. If you can, you will have earned my recipe. Mademoiselle, solving the murder of Roger Ackroyd was easier than this.
That was easy. As promised, my recipe is yours. Give me five minutes to write it down for you. Thank you. I am in your debt. I can take advantage of this moment to resume my little observations of the passengers. Did you enjoy the meal? I'm not used to meals like this. You do not have good restaurants in Kenya? Actually, we do. This is in the 1930s. I did not mean to offend. You didn't like the meal? The lobster, it was undercooked, and the potatoes were too dry. I expect, being Princess Dragomirov's assistant, you must be used to eating well. Cooking is an art. You do not need to wear the chef's hat to be an artist. What is your favorite dish? Curry roast. It is a specialty of mine. My little gray cells did not let me down. I made a lot of progress on the expenses last night, sir. I should be done by tomorrow morning. You're supposed to be a fast worker, Hector. Sorry, sir. Working here is not as comfortable as in our office in Boston. You're lucky to ride in a train like this. No, 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 not good. Et voila. Here you are, sir. My recipe. Please tell Mr. Book he should not expect my recipes for the other desserts. Thank you very much, mademoiselle. I know he will sincerely appreciate the gesture, and I will make certain he gets the message. Poirot, you were gone such a long time. It proved more challenging than I expected. This is wonderful. Did it require the use of your little gray cells? More the exercise of my little taste buds. Thank you so much, my friend. Eat your dessert. You've earned it. Good evening. My name is Ratchet. I think that I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Hercule Poirot, is that so? You have been correctly informed, monsieur. Your exploits are well known on my side of the Atlantic. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. Are you interested in earning a lot of money? My clientele, monsieur, is limited nowadays. I undertake very few cases. Why, naturally. I understand that. But this, Mr. Poirot, means big money. Big money. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. What is it you wish me to do for you, Monsieur uh, Ratchet? Mr. Poirot, I am a rich man. A very rich man. Men in that position have enemies. I have an enemy. Monsieur, in my experience, when a man is in a position to have, as you say, enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy only. Yes, I appreciate that point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. What does matter is my safety. My life has been threatened, Mr. Poirot. Now, I'm a man who can take pretty good care of himself, but as I look at it, a little insurance wouldn't hurt. And remember, big money. I regret, monsieur, that I cannot oblige you. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal, 
I do not like your face, Mr. Ratchet. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish my coffee peacefully. A nightcap, Monsieur Poirot? A cup of coffee, Monsieur Fauché. Then I will retire to my new compartment. I am sure you will find it to be most comfortable. We have stopped? Yes, sir. Belgrade Station. If you'd like to go out and get some fresh air, now is the time. The train leaves at 9.15. No, no, I see that it is snowing. I will not seek out the fresh air. Probably a wise decision. May I suggest a chocolate to accompany your coffee? It is produced by my father, the best chocolatier in Switzerland. I would never refuse a chocolate with such high recommendation. I know you will enjoy it, and please let me know if there is anything else you require. I do not think that's the right answer. My little grey cells did not let me down. Everything was perfect. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Is there anything you require, monsieur? No, merci. Why, I thought you'd left us. You said you were getting off at Belgrade. You misunderstood me. But, man, your baggage, it's gone. It has been moved into another compartment, that is all. Oh, I see. I wish you a good night, Monsieur Poirot. Good night. I hope you'll sleep well and that your head will be better in the morning. It is just the cold. I'm now making myself a cup of tea. I hope it'll warm you up. I hope so. Good night. Well, good night, my dear. What a brave girl. On the other hand, that man there in the next cabin Monsieur Ratchet. He scares the hell out of me. There's something wrong about that man. My daughter always says I'm very intuitive. When Mama gets a hunch, she's dead right. That's what my daughter says. And I've got a hunch about that man. He's next door to me, and I don't like it. I put my bags against the communicating door last night. <laughs> I thought I heard him trying the handle. Well, whoever you are, I'm going right to bed to read. Good night. Good night, madam. Whoever I am. Monsieur Ratchet seems very upset. Ah, 
finally a real bed fit for a king or a very tired detective. Monsieur Ratchet? Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. Good night, madame. The American lady? Yes, don't worry. You'll know how Mrs. Hubbard is. Imagine to yourself the time I have had with her. She insists, but insists, that there is a man in her compartment. Just imagine it, monsieur. In a space of this size, where would he conceal himself? I argue with her. I point out that it is impossible. She insists. She woke up and there was a man there. And how, I ask, did he get out and leave the door bolted behind him? But she will not listen to reason. Hmm. That one does not leave time to listen. The train has stopped, Mr. Michel. We have run into a snowdrift. Heaven knows how long we shall be here. I remember once being snowed in for seven days. Where are we? Between Vinkovsky and Brod. Oh la la. It's time for me to go back to bed. I wish you a good night, monsieur. Or what is left of it. Thank you. 